come forth in Jesus' name. We ask, God, that you would help us surrender what we thought it looked like. If we hold on to things tightly with our hands, we can't be open to receive. So we let go of what we thought it looked like, God. When we let go, we have open hands to receive the new thing, the Isaiah 43, the new thing that he wants to do in this place. We agree with the new thing. Do you not perceive it? He is doing a new thing in this house. Living water is rising up, I declare, in this house this morning. And we receive. Our posture is receive. Our posture is with surrender. Yeah, thank you, God. We repent of business as usual. It's not about a program. It's not about a cool song. It's about you, God. We want to worship like we're going to worship in heaven when we are surrounded around the throne. We want to have that kind of posture this morning. God, give us pure hearts. Blessed are the pure in hearts, for they shall see God. We want to see you this morning, God. Purify our hearts. Give us eyes that see and ears that hear. Yahweh. Great are 
Circled above the earth, the one seated on the throne with eyes of fire. Yahweh, oh, we confess God, great are you. We fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. As if we're in a room alone with him. We give you all our affection, all our attention. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the new life in this place. Thank you that you came to give life and life to the full. Thank you, God, that it's, we don't have to settle. Thank you, God, that you're, you're breathing hope on many people this morning. Even now as we worship, I just see a release of hope. Hope, new life. And that's that posture of receiving. Letting go of bitterness or disappointment. Letting go of, of grudges or holding on or division and receiving new life, receiving hope. I hear him say, come and dream again. Come and dream again. God, we receive. Come and dream again. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you came. Thank you, God, that you came. Thank you, God, that you came. You stood outside my grave with tears still on your Oh, I knew that you would come and you said, and my heart it woke up. Now I'm not afraid to see your face, cause I am alive. Oh, you came. Oh, I knew. You always do, you always come, you always do. You said this only sleeping, with one word my heart was beating. Up from my grave 
There's a lot of life on this song. Well, on anything we sing to him. I want you to notice the songs we picked this morning. They're not singing about him. They're singing to him. We're not singing about something. We know. This is, this is someone we know. We're singing about him. In this particular song we're about to sing, wherever we go, whatever church we go into and sing this song, you can feel the anointing you can feel what God is doing in this season in releasing the goodness of God. 
over the bride of Christ. So when we sing about God being good, I believe it's aligning our hearts into something. Because you know, sometimes we sing about something because we believe it. And sometimes we sing something until we believe it. And I think God really wants us to get and wrap our hearts and our minds and our spirits around who He is. Do you know the way through to the promised land? It's discovering who He is. The way is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So when we sing about the nature of God, it is literally advancing us into more. It's telling our hearts, no, this is who He is. It's agreeing, it's no, I don't believe that God disappoints us. I don't believe that about Him, I believe He's good. So whatever circumstance you're going through, whatever financial, marriage, trauma, whatever it is, I want you to look your circumstance in the face this morning and sing, tell that circumstance about the goodness of God. Sing about the goodness of God. This is more of a battle cry than anything. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, you are my soul. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my soul, and you are. So good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, let the King of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song, let the King the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, how oh, is my soul, and you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, I know you're good, oh, you are good, you're good.
like this, I always picture it's a family room, because it is. It's a family room, and we're going to do this for eternity, so get cozy. We get, to, we get, we get to do this. We get to do this. We get to do on earth what we're going to do in heaven. He's so good. He's so good. Thank you, God. Oh, Lord, my God. When I an awesome wonder consider the words thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! Oh, how great Thou art! Then sings my soul. shall come when Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home 
what joy will fill my heart then I will bow oh, in humble adoration and then proclaim my God how great woman that sat at your feet she poured out everything every drop everything she owned at your feet she didn't save one drop for tomorrow she poured it all out at your feet we want to be like those people we want to be a people like that thank you God for more thank you for sweeping through this morning this wave of refreshing for Trinity World Outreach thank you God Thank you for more. We could just agree for more. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hands again, just all across this place. It's a day of refreshing for you. It's a day where God has come and He's begun to fan the flames again in your life. We've been singing even over the, even this year that the dry season is over. And I want to tell you something. I believe that's a prophetic word. That the things you've been through and the hurts and the pains, even as we sang this morning, that He's the King of your heart. That the things that have been dry aren't going to be dry anymore. Places you needed manifestations of healing, you're going to see. Days of worship are back in your life. Days of praise are back in your life. Things that you struggled with, things that you thought, God, will it ever be that good again? God is saying, it's not only going to be that good, it's even going to be better. It's even going to be better. Your best days are still ahead of you. Father, I thank you that, God, you're taking us back to the heart of worship in this place. Lord, I thank you, Father, that revival has hit this place. Father, and things that we've prayed for, things that we've been seeking your face for, Lord, things that we've been crying out for. God, we are entering in the days of manifestations of those. Lord, I thank you. You've been good to TWOC. You've been good to this house. God, you brought us through many, many days, many, many years. But I decree today the best is yet to come. I believe you're in the right place at the right time. That the best is yet to come in this house and in your house. How many of you believe that today? Come on, give him a praise. The best is yet to come in your house. God's about to show up big in your house. God's about to do something amazing in your house. Let's make sure that we don't just keep this about us. Reach out and take the hand of your neighbor real quick because we wanna pray one for another. So Father, we come in the name of Jesus and in this atmosphere of worship, we pray for the one on our right and we lift them up right now. God, whatever they're going through, whatever they need, whatever 
Father, we pray that Jesus is Lord of all of their life. Father, we pray for the one on our left, and God, we ask you to move strongly in their life, and God, do a work that is supernatural. Father, let there be no doubt that it is God who did the work in their life. Father, we pray for the one behind us. Lord, bless them today. Encourage them today. We pray for the one in front of us. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are doing a work. Father, we pray for this house. And Lord, I thank you, Father, that there is a stirring that has begun like we have never seen in 46 years of this church that you are doing a thing that we have never seen, even though it's been good and days have been great, but you are taking us, hear me prophetically, God is taking us to a place that we have never been before. And it is time that you are in like you've never been in. And you are doing things, God, you never thought you could do. But through our God, we shall do valiantly. That's the season that we've entered into. Thank you, Lord. Father, you are truly good to this house. And what's happening in this house will happen in your house. You're going to know revival. You're going to know peace. Marriages are being restored. We're about to go into 21 days of family prayer. I'm telling you, during those 21 days, God is going to do the supernatural in your family. Whatever needs you have, whatever is going on, God is beginning to show up like you have never seen before. Mark my word, those are the kind of testimonies that are going to come out of it. Pray this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I receive everything that you have for me and for my house, for those around me, for this house. We receive it, Lord. You've been good. You've been great. But the best is yet to come. We're coming back to the heart of worship. Do a deep work in us, oh God. Take your plow to our fallow ground. Do a deep work. Do a deep work. Let it begin in me, in Jesus' name. And we will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord about 10 seconds of a praise like you believe he's really moving in your life. Come on. We've never seen it like this. We've never been down this path. But through our God, come on. About five more seconds. Come on. Your time real quick. I want to share something with you that has been very prevalent in the last week. And uh, we've been in this unshakable series. And this last week, our nation and part of our nation saw devastation uh, that even eclipsed Katrina of a few years ago, the amount of rain that Texas got and the flooding and and it's just, we're just seeing so much happen there. But let me, let me show you a couple of pictures, and then I want to just say a couple of things about them. If we have those, here are people being rescued out of Houston and out of homes. People, can just keep going, go to the next one. Little babies being rescued. Next one. Guys, just help them get a truck out of floodwaters. People going into just flooded homes and lots of devastation. And if, I know many of you have watched the pictures and the videos that are coming out of there. Next one, if we, I don't know how many we have, actually. Is that it? That's it. Um, here, and, and today is a day of prayer in churches all across America for Houston. And not just Houston, but Beaumont, all of that area on East Texas that has just had the, the devastation and here, and those pictures, the reason I put them up is because here's what I want to tell you that I believe God is saying to us as a church. And guys, I want to st skip the first two points. I want to just go to three, if we could. I got some other things. I'll tie it in next week. We'll get into it. Here's what I believe. People need to be rescued. Amen? Amen. That's a reality. People need to be rescued. Here's what I've been saying about us as a church. I believe we are better when we are a hospital and not a hotel. I really believe that. And I've been having, you know, once you preach it, you got to go back and say, do you believe that? I mean, you hope you believe it before you preach it, but I've gone back and said, do I really believe that? 
Do I believe that our job is really to rescue people more than it is to put them up in a five-star hotel? And, and what is church supposed to be like? And, and I'm asking myself that question, and I'm asking about my intention and our intention and all of that. But here's what I know. People need to be rescued. People in Fern Creek need to be rescued. People at TWOC need to be rescued. People in Louisville, that, people in Louisville, we are called to the city. People in Louisville need to be rescued. People on your job, that's why you're there. People need rescuing right where you're at. Whether you're putting rivets onto a, to a frame, whether you're uh, doctoring somebody, whether you're coaching, whether you're teaching, whatever it is, God is going to bring people into your path with this reality. They need rescuing just like you needed rescuing. No doubt about it. That's why those pictures, and you know what? Here's the thing. When people are going through crisis like what is happening there, and people, and we wake up, church. Come on, it's time to wake up. Yeah. Amen? And we recognize that. We no longer pick and choose who we rescue. We rescue those that need to be rescued. Some of those pictures, there's older generations rescuing younger generations. There's younger generations rescuing older generations. There's black people rescuing white people. There's white people rescuing black people. There's people, it doesn't matter. What I saw was I went by your house and I saw the flood waters and I got a boat and you can get in my boat and I will rescue you. I don't care what you look like. I don't care how much money you got or how much money you don't have. I will rescue you because I was sent with a boat and I got my boat and if you'll come and you'll get in my boat, I can get you to safety. Yeah, yeah. Sit down. Wait, wait a minute, put up Philippians 2.4. Philippians 2.4 that goes with that. Philippians 2.4. Don't look to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. That's our job. That's what church is supposed to be about. I thought it was about me and all, everything I wanted. And you don't get the curtain or the door on let's make a deal. You got to look out for other people. I got a boat. His name's Jesus. I got a boat. If you'll get in, man, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. And you know what? Rescue people that need to be rescued in a situation like that when it's that, they want to be rescued. Amen? Fourth, fourth point. The fourth thing. Here's what I know too. Rescued people rescue people. Put up 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 3. May all the gifts and benefits that come from God our Father and the Master, Jesus Christ, be yours. Every time I think of you, and I think of you often, I thank God for your lives of free and open access to God given by Jesus. There's no end to what has happened in you. It's beyond speech and beyond knowledge. Rescued people want to rescue people. Rescued people want to rescue people. You don't ever forget where you came from. Amen. You know why you want to pray for people that are blind? Because you've been there. You're, starting, you're being rescued. Rescued people want to rescue people. It's not just enough for me to get out. It's not just enough for me to get in my boat and float down to safety and get to the center, uh, the first aid center where they're feeding people. I got to take somebody with me. It's not enough. See all those pictures we showed? Rescued people. Rescued people. I, I like seeing those miles and miles of people who don't even know people that they're going to rescue. They call them the Cajun Navy. That just sounds bad to the bone, doesn't it? <laughs> Louisiana guys, man, they're bad. They they, you don't mess with it. They got the Cajun Navy heading down there. Miles of boats saying, put my boat in the water. I'll go get somebody. I don't care. Uh, I, I don't care, man. Put me over here. See, see, in the church, sometimes we want, well, put me over here. I don't, I don't, if I don't go over here, I'm not going to like it. If I don't do this, man, I just got a boat. Just put me in the water, man. I don't. 
don't care. Put me in the west end of Houston. Put me in the east end of Houston. Put me in the, I don't care. Just put me where people are drowning because I got a boat. I brought my boat, preacher. Just point me somewhere. I don't care. Amen. I don't care what seat I sit in. I don't care what I do. I just brought my boat. Look at your neighbor and say, I brought my boat. Brought my boat to church. All I need are some orders, pastor. Send me out. Just send me out. Let me teach a class. I don't care. I'll go rescue some three-year-olds. I'll go rescue some teenagers over here. I just got a boat. That's all I got. But it's good enough. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up together. Somebody say, I got a boat. I got a boat. Got a boat. Get my boat. I got my boat. I got my boat. I got my boat. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's lift our hands. Worship team, yeah, come on back up. Come on, we're about done. We're about done. Children's workers, we're about done. We'll be, we'll be there to get them in a minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God's doing something major in this house. This is a time to press in. This is a time that you begin to say, God, I want everything you've got. Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll serve, I'll, I'll give, I'll be faithful. This isn't a time to hold back. We're entering a season now of being, this is how we're unshakable because I got a boat and I'm willing to help somebody else and I'm willing to do, God, what you've told me to do. As he said, as he said, we've got, we've got to, to always count on the Holy Spirit. We've got to always say Holy Spirit. That's how we have unshakable families. That's how we do what we got to do. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, every Sunday, every Sunday, you're going to go to a higher level. Every Sunday, God's got something for you that you can take from here. And you can go, and, and God will use you during the week, and, but you got to press in. we got to be more hungry and more thirsty than we've ever been. Come on, Trinity, that's where we're at. Thank you, Lord. Just sing something, whatever God's given you. Come on, lift your hands one more time before we leave today. Spirit of God, have your way. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you're so good. Thank you, Lord. Come on, press in right now. Press in before we, come on, press in. Press in, press in. Thank you, Lord. The king of my heart my, my, my. be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, you are my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, you are my song, and you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. I know you're good. Oh.
never gonna let us down You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let us Oh, I know you're good, you're good Oh